first of our paintball motor prototypes. The next model will have a few changes such as a burst disc, a form of breech loading and will use up to two seal cartridges. Unfortunately we're still waiting on parts. The current model comes equipped with a bipod, a leveled sight, and an angle finder. This mortar is capable of launching smoke grenades, handfuls of paintballs, and paintball balloons. Maximum effective range seems to be a fairly consistent 65 yards, though this can vary depending on how and what is loaded as well as differences in terrain. The purpose of this video is to familiarize you with this specialized piece of equipment, including its principles, uh, principles of operation, uh, lost my place, ah, yes, usage and pros and cons. By popular request, we have footage of this ordinance being test fired. First though, we look at the ammunition. We'll discuss pros and cons later, but one of the biggest drawbacks is the slow rate of fire. The most prevalent ammunition is balloons filled with paint. Since all we needed to do was determine point of impact, we used water for these tests rather than actual paint. We found that we can fire one larger balloon or up to three smaller balloons, though in the latter case accuracy can be greatly reduced. A cartridge, as it were, would look like this. The balloon itself is filled and encased in a cardboard sleeve. This is in turn wrapped in paper towels and rubber banded together. This is not just a protective balloon, but it is in fact required to launch it. As you'll see in the video, three sheets of paper towel are crumpled up and wrapped in two other sheets. This is then shoved down the barrel and it is very important that it is as tight as possible. The cardboard sleeve and balloons is then inserted, followed by the other two paper towels, crumpled up, of course. Five paper towels are required for anything being fired, when, but the smoke grenade is a little bit different. The smoke grenade is simply ignited, dropped down the barrel onto the five sheets of paper towels, and then fired immediately. The mortar will accommodate both the Type 2 personal smoke grenade and the Type 2B. That was intended to be launched in the Metadyne Havoc launcher. Finally, a handful or so of paintballs can be launched. These will spread over an area up to 10 yards across at perhaps 45 yards, though it cannot be guaranteed all will break upon impact. More fragile or older paintballs are recommended for this as this is a perfect use for anything too unreliable to be fired in a marker. Let's look at the footage. Didn't work out. That's better. Hello there. Today we're going to be test firing this mortar. We've already sighted it in and we will be using several different kinds of ammunition.
approximately 43 degrees. Fire 
Bruce took out the camera. Slightly different ammunition. This is a cluster of three water balloons. In theory, they would be pink balloons, but since we're not shooting at anyone, we don't want to waste the paint. Three. Or maybe four. We will be shooting a cluster of pink balls. All right, that's it. Now that you've seen the mortar in action, let's talk about its pros and cons. The biggest two drawbacks are its slow rate of fire and lack of range. Additionally, it cannot be fired from or at an area with significant overhead cover. And while definitely man-portable, 
It is unwieldy and without favorable terrain or prepared position for the person firing it is both exposed and more or less immobile. Unless he or she wants to just abandon the mortar and run away. Finally, each shot requires and uses up a single 12 gram CO2 cartridge. This can get a bit on the expensive side. On the other hand, balloons of paint falling from the sky have a much larger splash, splash radiance than a paintball and due to the high angle of fire it can hit multiple targets behind cover. It can also be fired from behind cover at a stationary target without exposing the mortar or the player using it. Provided it's properly loaded and sighted and ammunition is within established tolerances, the ammunition we used all weighed between 5 and 6 ounces and was roughly the same size, um, it's fairly accurate. The mortar's principle of operation is simple. This is the main valve assembly. It's missing the CO2 adapter, which would go here, and obviously the barrel is gone. This uh, would go into the rear of the barrel. Where was I? Okay, so, um, yeah. It's missing the CO2 adapter, which will hold the CO2 cartridge, and of course it's not connected to the barrel. When completely installed, though, inserting a CO2 cartridge into the adapter will puncture it, pressurizing a section of the assembly below the ball valve, right here, to around 850 PSI. It can vary depending on temperature. Let me close the valve here. When the ball valve is actuated, the pressure will rush through the ball valve, through this curve here, and into the barrel, expanding as it does so. This will expel anything in the barrel outwards with a significant amount of force. The faster the ball valve is actuated, the more force is applied to whatever is in the barrel. You may already have seen this in the footage earlier, but this is the mortar's setup procedure. First, the bipod is folded out and extended. We found that in practice, Full extension is not optimal. Is that about right? Second, you want to make sure the ball valve is in the closed position. Otherwise, when you screw in your CO2 cartridge, it'll slowly vent the cartridge, wasting it and not actually firing anything. At this point, you would want to insert your first, uh, what do I want to call it, wadding, I guess. Your first ball of wadding in here. I'm not going to actually do this because we're inside. But I will get ready to load the CO2 cartridge. The fourth step depends on what you're launching. If you're launching paintballs or balloons, you load your ammunition now, followed by your second wadding. If you are launching smoke, skip this step. Reason being, the smoke will have to be lit and dropped in the barrel, and once you drop it in the barrel, it can't stay there. It is quite a bit flammable, and this barrel is actually plastic, so it's really melt. I could have sworn I had some CO2 cartridges. Oh well. Let's see. Fifth. 
you loosen the retaining screw on the angle finder and allow the arm to swing freely. This tells you what angle the mortar is at. Ideally, I found that uh, 40 to 43 degrees seems to be the optimal combination of height and range. In other words, it shoots the furthest. Seventh, you want to sight the mortar. You loosen this with this wing nut here. Level the mortar. That's about right. Okay. And you want to turn on your sight. At this point, presuming there isn't a smoke grenade in the barrel that you've already lit, which I just told you not to do, you want to insert the CO2 cartridge. Make sure this ball valve is up at a 90 degree angle, otherwise as you screw this in, you will slowly vent your CO2 cartridge and it will not be enough to shoot anything out of the barrel. At this point, once the CO2 cartridge is in all the way, you should hear a faint hissing. This is both because the cartridge itself is depressurizing and because the mortar is not completely airtight. This ball valve was not designed to handle pressures this high. Let's see. So at this point, if you're going to be launching smoke, you're going to want to light your grenade and drop it down the barrel. At this point, you should be ready to shoot. All it takes to fire is that. Now, if you're actually firing this at this point, if possible, you want to observe the point of impact. Chances are it won't be exactly where you were aiming. Presuming there was no wind and you actuated the ball valve quickly enough, it should be close. Depending on the splash radius, you might be close enough, but there's a good chance you'll want to uh, do some adjusting anyway, if you have time for a second uh, launch. Now, as you might imagine, this will give away your position. So, either you'll need to have another paintball marker with you to defend yourself, some teammates close by to do the defending for you, or you're probably going to want to get out of there pretty quickly. Well folks, that's the mortar video. So, maybe watch the sky as well as watching your step. See you in the field.